So hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now today the Lord of TT has given us finally the new Giant Trinity 2025, I think, disc. It's at the Tour de Romandie, the individual TT and Luke Plapp is riding it. So let's take a look at some of the differences on the new bike, what we think is the new bike, because let's not forget the Giant Trinity, the existing one or the current one, is probably the longest running bike in pro cycling history. It's been going around since Tommy D was driving it up passes between taking dumpers on the grass and it's probably long overdue an update, but is it overdue an update? It's the only rim brake bike left in the World Tour and normally I would say that's not such an issue because the rim brakes probably were quite good for the aerodynamics and you know, working on the bike and stuff in, in normal senses. If you think of rim brake bikes being you know, on the road bikes, when discs and integration came in, it got a bit of a headache. But actually, I think with this bike, the disc brakes are a good update because if you know anything about the current Giant Trinity, the rim brakes are absolutely dog -tier. They don't work in the wet, they're very finicky to set up and I think the mechanics will actually have an easier time setting up discs on this bike than they will rim brakes. Um, and actually the rim brakes is something I'm, I'm working to develop a new kind of adapter system on the current Trinity, so watch this space. Anyway, let's have a look at the new one and see what we can see. So, pretty pretty same on the silhouette from the side profile, however a few things have changed when you look at it on the frontal profile. You can see a slightly skinnier seat post, but the, the very straight seat post angle uh, has stayed the same. Obviously the effective seat post angle is still laid back, but the seat post is still dead straight, so it's not that comfortable. There's no sort of like leaf spring layback effect. However, the seat post has got a little bit skinnier, it looks like here. They've dropped down the clamp into the seat tube to get that rubber grommet flush with the top tube. Maybe there's a tiny watches gain there, but I doubt it. On the front end, we can see there's a chine in the head tube. The head tube looks to be a bit deeper as well to take advantage of the new UCI ruling. So when the, the original bike, or the previous bike was made, it was obviously done to the old UCI rules. So you can see on this, the head tube's got a lot deeper. The fork has got a hell of a lot deeper. Um, I actually ride the triathlon version of the Trinity, which has got the deeper fork, which is more like this one. But now the road side, UCI, have, you know, uh, uh, relaxed that rule and allowed a deeper fork. So it's a much, much deeper fork. But the way the fork integrates with the head tube and the way it fixes on looks to be exactly the same. So it's kind of traditional. It's got a very thin aluminium steerer tube, the current one. I think it's only an inch. It might be an inch. I don't think it's an inch and an eighth. I think it's just an inch. It might be an inch and an eighth. Anyway, it goes up through the the head tube, normal headset bearings, and then it's got this kind of front brace area, uh, just like the existing one. And that was a bit shit on the existing one, but it does work. It does creak a bit. The bolts do come loose, so you have to be aware of that. Um, the handlebars, we've gone to a mono riser system, which from my point of view, like mechanically, I don't like, especially with this two bolt system. So there's only two bolts holding a rider onto the front of the bike now. Obviously those bolts are in tension um, from you know just the bolt load, but they also deal with quite a lot of bending. Um, if the adapter blocks aren't designed right, those bolts will be put into bending as the rider's weight shifts left and right from side load, those could go into bending. So if the adapters have been designed right, they're isolated from bending, but still two bolts is not as good as having four. I personally wouldn't want to be attached to the bike with two bolts at the front. I'd prefer to see four, which was like the old system. You had four long bolts, all in tension and I think the old setup with the cross brace might have been stiffer, but we don't know how the adapter blocks are set up yet. If they're keyed in a way or slotted together in a way which they isolate the bolts from bending, then that's good. Um, the bar, because this is the UCI legal version, is quite slim. It looks to have quite a slim cord length or quite a short cord length. Looks like a traditional headset like the old one. Um, and obviously this setup here is Luke Plapp's custom setup. So. This has probably come from his old bike having the, you know, these bolted fixtures here off the current Trinity. They haven't created him a system for the new one yet. So this whole plate at the bottom is probably a custom adapter plate. But I have to say it's done pretty well. And then he's got his like normal uh, 3D printed TI extensions on there. As you can see here, just on the old, the old fork, how skinny the old fork was. So that was well due an update. These are the kind of connecting blocks between the fork legs and the handlebars, which, like I said, currently are... It's sort of a bit of an over-constrained way of actually dealing with stuff because you've got a lot of bolts fighting against each other on the current one and there's an, a, a good order to do the bolts up in the right order so you kind of don't over-constrain the system but it is a bit of a mess but they seem to have stuck with it. Obviously Giant are quite good at sticking to what they know and they don't try and reinvent the wheel which is why you know, I do kind of like Giant. But anyway, can't wait to get my hands on this new bike. As soon as it comes out I'm going to get one because as you know I developed a few parts for the Trinity and... 
yeah, looks to be some good opportunities to do stuff on this. Uh, massive tyre clearance. So this is a 28 Corsa Pro Speed. Um, the current Trinity has a few, probably about six or seven mil of adjustment of the dropout. So you can slide the wheel back and forward. Um, there's two little grub screws. I think they're probably M2s or M2.5 in the back of the dropout, which you can shunt the back wheel forward and back. That kind of worked, but I think with disc brakes, they'll, they'll have done away with that because the disc brake alignment will change. So now I think they've got a fixed dropout with a normal through axle, and they've just had to increase the tyre clearance to make all tyres fit, whereas before you could really get that back wheel close in to get right up against the UCI ruling, which is like some commissaire's credit card going through or anything like that. Anyway, just before we, we, we carry on, these pictures were provided by uh, Johnny Whale, one of the head coaches from Darbados. Darbados is the finest coach that was ever, you know, came into cycling, but now he works in pro cycling. Um, we have to call him Johnny Vala. So thanks to Johnny Vala for, uh, you know, being continental and sending me these pictures. Um, this is the kind of rear seat stay setup. It's a lot more bowed out. We've seen that kind of on a lot of bikes. Um, the, the, the wider they can get, the better the wake management coming off the rider's legs. I don't know if these are quite wide enough to do that, um, and they're quite low because they're still dropped. And if we see these wide, wide offset seat stays, normally they go right up to the the top of the seat tube, and make a very, you know, two very large splitter plates at the back. This is kind of a mixture of the old one and that theory. So I'm not sure how effective these are going to be. But just going back to that cutout, I mean, there's masses of clearance in there. You could probably fit a 35 in there if you wanted, which is really cool because there's no reason now that it's got discs that you can ride this for serious long distance events and be super comfortable on it, which is why I think the old one was good as well because that had a shitload of tyre clearance. This is the kind of the front, obviously loads of tyre clearance on the fork there. The fork legs are quite bowed out. On the current setup with the Trinity, certainly my one, you can... Because the stem essentially is separate from the handlebars, you can actually flip the handlebars so they either offset up or they're offset down. So you can actually adjust the height of the base bar by probably a good 80 mil, depending on the bike fit. With this one, that looks like you're stuck with either the down position or they may produce one that rises up as a separate part. No doubt you'll have to buy that separate. There's also a new helmet that Luke has been spotted wearing here. He looking you know very flush in his uh, new helmet. Must have just done a warm up. It's looking a bit red in that shot. Back of it, similar to what we see on the S-Works, the new S-Works helmet, kind of the same theory. I don't know if they've converged on that design simultaneously by hard work or they've just copied. I'm not so sure. Another picture of him. And then this is uh, Johnny Vala. He's aged quite badly since he's you know moved to the continent and started being a pro, pro scientist. Here he is, super happy, chappy, Luke Plappy. He's happy because he's not wearing anything from Jumbo Visma or Giro. So yeah, he's pretty chuffed with that new helmet. It doesn't look like too much of a dickhead. Um, here he is, you know. Uh, and there's one other thing I want to show you on this bike. The, the way they've mounted the caliper is quite interesting. It's right on the bottom of the fork. Now to keep that fork uh, cord length as deep as possible for the large, largest amount of fork as possible, they've kind of rotated the caliper down and backwards. Now there's nothing in the rules that says you can't do that. You just have to make the caliper work. So if you could rotate it down and backwards, um, it makes the fork leg deeper for more of its height, if you see what I mean. So that's kind of clever, quite like that. Um, it's a shame there's no sliding dropout anymore because you know we've, we've had to do that because of through axles and discs. We can't have that adjustable anymore, so they've just gone, oh, fuck it, we'll just leave a massive load of tire clearance. Same on the front. Um, there's quite a big gap there, but that's fine because if I get this bike, I'll probably be riding on 30s or 32s, but definitely a 32 on the back just to make it nice and bouncy. Um, geometry wise, Johnny told me it looked a bit odd in the short size, in the smaller sizes. It looks like the rider's going to be right over the top of the headset. It might make it feel a little bit twitchy. Um, let's see if we can go back to Luke's shot. I'm not actually sure what frame size this is, um, but I think that's a, a symptom of all TT bikes, to be honest, in smaller sizes. What do you think of the new bike? Is it a step forward? It's got big shoes to fill. Like I said, the current one's been around since, I think, 2015. Tommy D, world champ, TT champ. Um, it's been probably one of the best, most reliable bikes I've ever worked with, I've ever used, and, and I've ever seen in the Pro Tour. Um, here it is, still looks good, doesn't it? Apart from them crappy rim bakes, which I think the mechanics are gonna be chuffed to see the back of. I think, like I said, I think at the start, a lot of people were pissed when disc brakes came in, but I think on this bike, 
it's a welcome addition actually because it's going to make it simpler. Just bleeding a disc is, is simpler than setting up these crappy, crappy calipers. I think I'm made by TRP. Um, the back one's okay. It's the front one where it's very, very difficult to center. It's got a um, temperament like a neurotic girlfriend when you're a teenager. It just some days loves you and some days it just rubs the wrong way. Excuse the pun. Uh, let me know what you think down below. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next one.